So it's a little after two, so we're going to go ahead and jump on to into the training. Uh, we have a couple people that were here this morning for our earlier training. So um, when um, so a little bit of this will be a repeat, just the start, the first couple slides, and then the rest of it's new stuff. So um, so we're going to jump on into it. Um, if my screen will respond to me, that is. Oh, there we go. Um, so our purpose for today is as I said this morning in our training, that we will always, always start with connecting you to the mission of our work because that's why we're here. And so every opportunity that we get to talk to companies, we're always trying to draw you in to the work that we are doing and what's happening in our community. Uh, but then we're also gonna provide some initial guidance in starting a brand new workplace for your company. So this is getting things set up like payroll deduction and, and when you should run things and stuff like that. So uh, we're gonna go over those steps here today. Um, I did this slide earlier today, but if you weren't on that, set, our crew is still the same, um, but everybody's on the call to this afternoon. Um, I am your point of contact for anything campaign related. If you've got any questions related to campaign, feel free to reach out at any time. I also have a couple other helpers and then one additional person that is on the call today, but she works more behind the scenes um, on all of the backside of things of getting things on our website and all of our uh, materials produced and all of our um, content built out and stuff like that. So um, I'll reintroduce Maggie Gray. She's our donor relations coordinator. Uh, that means that she's the point of contact between us and a lot of the company companies and getting workplace campaigns set up. Um, any sort of details that you're going to need, if you're going to need materials, if you're going to need something customized for your campaign, she will be the point of contact on um, those things. Maggie, do you want to say hi real quick? Hi, everybody. I see everybody's back. Oh, there's Liz. I see Liz today. Hey, Liz. Just want to say hi. Welcome back. I'm glad you guys are taking advantage of this opportunity to just kind of learn a little bit more. And I look forward to talking to you more on Thursday. Also on the call is Norma Noonan. She is our donations management coordinator. Um, so she takes all of y'all's pledge information that you're going to turn in. Um, and then she is going to uh, work her magic on it and audit it, make sure all the numbers are correct that we match, uh, as well as then get everything entered into our donation system um, in order to track those gifts so that when payments come later on, we can reconcile those two things together, but also uh, to send out donor acknowledgements, um, as well as some reporting and all sorts of stuff like that. Norma, do you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. It's nice to meet you all or see you all again if you've already met. So yeah, I'm excited for another another great year. And then also on the call, but not included on the slide, if you guys need anything related to production of stuff, um, Kat Gammon is our person. She is our, uh, our hang on, hang on a second, it's coming to me. Communications uh, man director, no, manager of communications, I think. Communications and outreach manager, that's the title, sorry. Um, and she does all sorts of stuff uh, behind the scenes. So all of our videos that we post, our, our campaign toolkit uh, that we'll show you guys, um, anything like that, that will all be produced by her. So Kat, you could want to say hi real quick or just wave or anything like that. I will wave because it is prime <laughs> mailman time at my house right now. <laughs> and as you can hear from puppies barking in the background, we are still working remotely. Um, I'm at the office today. I think someone else just walked in the office a few moments ago because I heard a tap on my door. Um, and but otherwise our staff is primarily working remotely right now and we're doing that for the foreseeable future but if you do call any of these numbers and leave voicemails they do go to our emails so we can get them really quickly we're tr still trying to be very responsive we're all still working our regular hours uh, we're just doing it in different locations than we typically would um, I'm just going to dive right in and first of all always connect us back to the to the mission of United Way which is to fight for the health education and financial stability of every person in the Brazos Valley. And as I've said before, this is gonna look different at different times and in, um, in different places in our community and at different times in our history. We are gonna be an adaptive organization that's going to respond to our community's greatest needs um, and hopefully deploy resources to address those needs um, in a continual basis. I really love uh, so, so United Way and I love the work that we do through our partner organizations as well as all of our programs, which if you don't know a whole lot about that, I would encourage you to take some time later this week and check out the earlier training from today. I spent about 40 minutes just on our mission alone. And on this training, I'm not gonna do that, partially because it's a repeat of people. I didn't wanna repeat, repeat the same information, but also because 
um, this is more tactical stuff for setting up the campaign. But I always go back to uh, the power of United Way is that of what can be done collectively, both on our investment side as well as on our fundraising side. From a fundraising perspective, one person making a $1 donation a week really can turn into millions of dollars because there's lots of people in lots of workplaces and lots of workplaces that are participating. And when that little bit adds with other people's and other people's and other people's, that pool just keeps getting bigger. And then on the investment side, it's the same thing. One organization can only do so much, but we have a network of 22 partner organizations that we band together and tackle issues together. Um, that's, it's amazing what we're able to accomplish when we're able to do that as a collective force instead of all these individual organizations working separately and on their own. Uh, we all of a sudden are working together and driving together while we're fighting for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in the Brazos Valley. And I said this before, I was saying in an email right before this to another company that was helping them with some language on an email to their employees. Now more than ever, the services that are provided by United Way and our partner organizations are more critical than ever. We have more people in need than we've ever had before. We're experiencing changing workplaces every single day um, and changing environments and community environments every single day. And the work that our partners are doing is now more critical than ever. And so that is our focus this year in campaign and saying that our nonprofit partners were already stretching themselves to serve the client base that they had. And now it's only COVID-19 is only pushing us to stretch ourselves in farther and in different ways. So the gifts that we receive through the United Way campaign is more critical than ever and more supportive than ever. It's a really wonderful time to be a part of the United Way campaign. It's also a really critical time to be a part of the campaign. So diving into more tactical on the campaign side of things and getting your campaign set up. So I'm going to talk to you guys as if a campaign has never been run at your workplace. I see a couple people on here who have maybe had campaigns in some way, some form or another. We have a couple that are brand new to set up a campaign this year. Um, so I'm going to talk from the basis as if we've never had a campaign in your workplace again, and you can always adapt from there. Um, so overall, the general timeline is that in the fall, that's where the, when a company will have a quote unquote campaign, typically it lasts two to four weeks. We don't really recommend for anything beyond that because beyond that, it just starts lingering too long and people lose interest. If you keep it two to four weeks, you can make it really good and concise and focused depends on the size of your workplace. If you've got hundreds of employees, it might take four weeks to get through all of those and get out to all of those different employee locations. If you've got five or six employees, you might be able to do it in a week. We always say, say give a period of time. I don't know, ever recommend just doing it in one day because there's always those donors who will say, oh, I need to talk to my family member or spouse or something like that. And we want to be respectful of that. We want this to be a decision that they come to and they don't feel pressured into that they feel good about this opportunity to give. Um, we do need results back as soon as possible. Our best recommendation is six weeks, within six weeks of the pledging period that you get us the documentation so we can complete that as well as start that acknowledgement process. Uh, sometimes also we've noticed um, if somebody writes a check and then it sits in your desk for three or four months and then it gets to us, it makes it more difficult for us to track that check person down and get them to reissue a check or we don't like to deposit checks after 90 days uh, after the date. So try really hard to get that stuff into us as quickly as possible. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, typically when campaigns run in the fall, that's because the spring is when payroll deductions, I'm sorry, the January, um, I guess you could say that's spring, uh, January as when payroll deductions start and they generally run for 12 months after that. Now, of course, every workplace is a little bit unique and so we'll work around whatever uniquenesses your company has. We do have an employer who only does a 10 week uh, collection period and we work with it. So it just kind of depends on how you wanna set it up with your company. Your company is one of about 120 companies here in the community. So when you think of what you're doing at your workplace, just multiply that and quantify that by 120 workplaces. And that shows the real power of what's happening. Um, it is amazing to see this force of people coming together every single day um, over the course of several months in order to raise a lot of money for our community. So it's a really neat thing. And in 2019, our 2019 campaign raised uh, just over $1.6 million between our workplace campaign, our fundraisers, our grants that we receive from other funding sources, all of that came together to raise just over $1.6 million. 
So as I said, workplace campaigns should include about a two to three week period. Again, that's a little flexible around your workplace. Uh, we recommend that you have some form of a kickoff effort of some for, sort, whether that is an event like a breakfast or um, a happy hour or a lunch meeting where it's everybody's all together at the same time to kick it off. Of course, that's going to look a little differently this year if we're not actually getting together in the same place. So it could be a Zoom meeting or an email that kind of kicks it off or a video. Our campaign toolkit has a lot, has some resources, um, some sample email communications. There's a, a sample email communication from leadership. So whoever the highest leader is in your company here in the Brazos Valley uh, can write something. And there's a sample there of how to kind of kick that off. Um, and then there's also some others for you as the internal coordinator. Um, there can also be a little video recorded by the leadership, whatever you wanna do to kind of officially make it known company-wide United Way's campaign is kicking off. Uh, since the training this morning, I've had a couple emails from some companies and one of them saying, hey, we're getting, we're starting planning. We need posters to put up at your, in our break room. So that's also a really great way to kind of start that introduction um, is to have some United Way signage around your company. So we can provide, and they're on our website as well, the posters, you can print them yourself or we can print them for you and drop them off. Um, posters, uh, materials, we can hand out materials and all sorts of things like that. And then there's traditionally the next phase is actual campaign rallies that can be done in one meeting that some of our companies is across about 15 meetings and it kind of depends again for the company and the workplace and what the setup is. Um, and again, this year we can do them in person or we can do them completely virtual where we're doing it over Zoom with all the employees or we can do it where we're not even involved at all and you're just using stock content that we have already produced and put on our website for you. Um, this is the time when they are able to complete their pledge forms and hear a little bit about United Way, about our partner organizations, and make their pledged gift. Then we also recommend uh, best practices to have some fundraisers. Fundraisers are always fun, builds, builds just camaraderie across the company. Uh, again, we have a training on Friday that will, or no, not Friday, on Thursday. Maggie was moving your training there. On Thursday afternoon, um, that's specific about adapting fundraisers for the socially distant workplace. So. Um, if you're still able to do your bake sales or your, um, we have some that do a pancake breakfast, we have live auctions, silent auctions, golf tournaments, I mean, you name it, there's companies out there that do all sorts of different fundraisers to supplement uh, their, their workplace giving. Um, you know, we, if you can still do those in the traditional sense, fantastic. If you can't and you want to do something adapted, uh, check out that training. It's going to be really good on, on some different ideas. I referenced this already, but this is the cam campaign toolkit. Uh, there is so many things on there and even more that will be coming as we continue to develop them. If there's something that's not on there that you need, please let us know and we'll either produce it for you or we might already have it and then we might want to share it with other people. Uh, something I would really point out is our digital workplace campaign guide. Uh, that is a great tool because it specifically talks about adapting workplace campaign for a, a place where we're not all in the same place. Um, so there's just great resources on there across the, the page. So really there are three phases of campaign. There is the planning phase, the campaigning, and then the celebrating. Celebrating is a much more, a much more fun word than thanking, but it's a critical part of the process, that thanking part um, and making sure we will acknowledge donors, but also that you acknowledge the work that your company has done. So planning is this that from today until you kick off your campaign and whatever phase happens there, whatever you do during that time, pay, time frame. Campaigning is the time of actually actively asking for gifts and then celebrating is, is communicating back out the total. That's something that um, I think is really important and I would encourage companies to do that is to go back to your employees because I think uh, that's the moment when people go, oh, wow, we did what? That's awesome. Or, oh my gosh, I, we didn't make our goal and I made, didn't make my gift. Can I still make my gift? And of course, then you say, yes, we can still take your gift because we will take a gift anytime that somebody wants to uh, do that. So there's really kind of five steps to setting up a brand new workplace campaign. Um, we're going to talk about three of them today. Two of them um, are done during different trainings. Number three, we did earlier today in talking about the internal coordinator um, a little bit, as well as we'll talk about the committee a little bit on Thursday. And then the planning of the activities, that's what we'll talk about during the training on Thursday at, at 1030. 
Uh, so today we're going to talk about confirming the leadership and or corporate support, setting up the details with your HR and payroll department, and then reporting the results to United Way. So kind of jumping right into that leadership and corporate support, I always say that the leadership support is so critical to the success. A leader who is active and, and comfortable speaking out about their support of United Way um, or the work that United Way is doing through our partners always let, creates a really great environment for a strong campaign. Um, we can still have a campaign if your leader is not super crazy about speaking out publicly about it. That's fine as well. We can still have a very, very successful campaign that, that way. Um, but it always does help if the, if the leadership is bought into the work some um, a little bit. So there's kind of two aspects to this kind of depending on the structure of your company. If the company is locally owned and managed, there's a, one set of checklists. And then if it's not locally owned or locally managed, there's a different set of checklists. So if it's locally owned, um, really what you're looking for in talking with the leadership is that they, you have their voice of support and blessing in the, in the campaign. Um, voice of support can be as much as little as, yes, you're, we can do a campaign to absolutely, I'm going to write a letter, I'm going to do a video, I'm going to, I'll go to every location. We have um, a bank here in town that the, the bank chairman uh, would go to every single branch location and talk to his employees every year. Um, and the gamut is across the, the spectrum and that's fine. Um, but that's the first thing that you want to double check is just kind of gauge what is their interest in the level of, of support. You, they almost become your campaign chair within your own workplace is how much are they willing to have a voice of support. Uh, the other thing to do, to do is to confirm if there's a corporate gift or match or giving incentives. I'll touch on that in just a moment on another slide to go into more details on what that is. If your management or corporate structure is not where your leadership is here, the, lo the local decision maker is here in this community, then you'll just have to work through whatever those chains are in order to confirm that support and find out um, how much they're able to do. I don't know that they can necessarily go to every employee or every employee meeting, obviously, if they're not here locally, but they may still be having a strong voice of support and able to lend something to help your campaign efforts. Um, but I would also confirm if there's already existing systems in place for a United Way campaign. We work with lots of companies who have um, structures in which their, their business headquarters are not here locally, uh, but they have existing relationships um, and existence, existing systems set in place that can make it just that you're just basically opening up a new aspect of uh, benefits for your employees and it's not having to recreate anything. Um, so for example, um, it might already be in your payroll system for you to make a payroll deduction to United Way if you'd like to. Um, they may already have that system set up and not have to do anything with that. So I would check with whoever your HR paperwork or your HR payroll office is to confirm if that system is in place already for a United Way campaign. How those typically work, I'll just touch on this just for a moment. How those typically work is that if your headquarters is in a different community, there is another United Way in that community that quote unquote owns that relationship. Um, and so we will work with either directly with your headquarters or with that local United Way in order to get that information. But it does help that they are in the loop if you're starting a campaign here. We had a business that um, expanded into this region a few years ago. The person who went to work with them here locally, who is their local decision maker, was a longtime United Way supporter. So it was like, yeah, no problem. I don't mind doing a workplace campaign. Like We'd love to. Well, what we didn't realize is that their corporate, their payroll office already had a relationship with United Way. So those pledges were being paid to that local United Way and never getting to us directly. And then as soon as we let that local United Way know, they said, oh, no problem, we'll send them on to you. But it was, it just, if we can do that on the front end, that just helps keep things smoother than having to go back and track it down after the, after the fact. And then of course, the third step there is also confirming if there's a corporate gift match or giving incentives. So what we're talking about there is, um, and not every company does this, and every company is a little bit different in the way that they do this if they do it. So there's kind of a few different categories uh, that things like this can fall into, that this is a corporate decision. Um, typically, it's a, I would say it's 
above the pay grade of the internal coordinator. It's the leadership decision. You might be the leadership decision maker in your company, and if you are, that's fantastic. You can make that decision very easily. But if you're not, obviously I know that you might not be able to uh, directly decide whether or not there's a corporate gift. But, and if you're uncomfortable asking about any of this, let me know. It's my job to ask, so I don't mind asking, and I will help um, navigate that conversation for you. Uh, but there could be an opportunity for the company to make a corporate gift, which this is just a gift from, directly from the company uh, to United Way. It might be coming out of their, their social corporate, or corporate social responsibility fund or from marketing fund or something like that, um, that they're able to make a gift. Sometimes companies will also have a kind of a side foundation that we can apply for grants to some of our specific programs through. So helping us navigate, figure that out and identify if there is an opportunity there is really beneficial for us. If there's not, that's perfectly fine. There's no reason to not do a campaign just because there's not a corporate gift. Uh, your employees can support us directly in a, in a very major way as well. Corporate match is where the company actually says we're going to match all of or a portion of the, don the employee's gift. And so we've got companies that do it dollar for dollar, 50 cents to the dollar, Exxon Mobil does $3 to the employee's dollar, which is amazing. I would love, don't we all wish we could be Exxon Mobil, right? Um, but they're incredibly supportive of their, of their United Way campaign. So whatever your company can do is amazing and fantastic. It's just helpful to let us know. So that way we can kind of identify where those funds are gonna be coming from and also acknowledge that and also promote it to your employees. Because a lot of times they really respond when they hear, wow, my company is gonna match Every dollar that I give, my company's gonna give 25 cents or a dollar or whatever it is. Um, we're so thankful for that. Giving incentives are kind of along those same lines of, of kind of helping promote it to the employees of, hey, this is what the company is doing to support this and really get behind it. And this really is a leadership decision. Um, so I would, that's just a conversation to look at. So um, one thing, for example, is an example of a giving incentive is we do this here at United Way and there's still some companies that do it that's called the fair share day. So the company gives an extra day off for every, to every employee who makes a gift of at least 1% of their annual salary. Uh, in our office, it's known that if you give to United Way, even working at United Way, if you give back to United Way, you get that fair share day. And so it's common language of like, oh, I've got my fair share day to use. Um, employees really like having that, um, that extra time. Who doesn't like to have extra time off? Um, so of course, check with your HR office to see if that's an opportunity. And if it's not fair share for 1%, it could be something else, like maybe an hour off or something like that, kind of depending on what it is for your workplace. Um, some workplaces do raffle drawing items. So for every pledge form that gets, gets filled out or for every so many dollars on a pledge form given, you get a, a, a ticket to enter into a raffle. I have seen raffles that are as little as um, like a meal, like a Chick-fil-A meal or wherever your favorite restaurant is to I've seen um, uh, what are, Yeti coolers and grills and parking spots. If you've got kind of a place where you have to walk a little ways to get to your building, raffling off one of the close parking spots uh, is a really effective way. Uh, Baylor Scott and White does that. One of our mines out in um, Kasi does that. Uh, and people love it. Each month they draw a new name of people that have filled out their pledge form and that person gets to have the United Way parking spot. They've, sometimes they put up a sign that says United Way parking spot. It just re-anchors everyone of like, this is a community effort that we're trying to do this together and all work together towards this. So I've seen TVs, I mean, you name it of whatever things. And everybody's company is a little bit different. Some companies have some budget for this kind of stuff. Um, so I would just check with, in with them. Exclusive experiences is also something else that you see a lot of times with a lot of the bigger companies, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't, can't work for a smaller company. But um, I've seen where if, uh, if a donor is a leadership giver level, which is $1,000 a year, then they have a special luncheon with the CEO of the company. Um, or if your company has a box at Kyle Field or season tickets to baseball games, um, you know, giving kind of that extra access, those exclusive experiences for your employees. Um, for, for some employees, it's about the fun experience. For some employees, it's about the access to um, people that they wouldn't typically get to sit down and have conversations with. So whatever kind of works for your company environment um, are, are great things to do. If on any of those giving incentives, if you're like, well, those don't really work for me, but I really want to do something, 
reach out to us. We will look at this and, and help you talk through what are some ideas that we can do uh, with your company. I would also encourage you guys to think about this opportunity as a United you know, Way workplace campaign as a team building opportunity. When you can make it into a team building opportunity, sometimes there's some funds in that budget. If there's professional development or team building um, kind of budget in your company that you can tap into because getting a bunch of people together to set a goal and to work towards that goal together, whether that's a company goal or if it's a goal for their community, really can be a really positive team building experience. And especially in a time like now when people can feel a little bit like, I don't even know what to do. There's, I, I can't give a lot. Well, you can help on a committee or you can help um, in this other, with this fundraiser or something like that and help us work towards this team building effort of reaching a, a, a goal with our company um, and it can be really a positive experience, something that people really want to be a part of. Um, and then it's like, ooh, it's an exclusive thing of just getting to work on the United Way campaign instead of uh, it ever feeling like something else you just have to get done. All right, so jumping into the next step, which is the checklist for HR and payroll. I'm going to say HR payroll. Everybody's, again, everybody's company is different. So in our office, our director of finance is also the HR, the payroll, the everything office. In other companies, you're going to have things very segmented. So whoever the appropriate person needs to be. I made the mistake at a Brian ISD meeting saying something about the HR office handling payroll deductions. And they're like, no, 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 it's the finance office. I'm like, okay, the finance office. I don't know who, what you guys call your different offices. So um, whoever needs to be the person who processes payroll and deals with pay, uh, payroll deductions needs to be included on this conversation. Um, so working with them, if that's not you, working with them to make sure that they are ready for payroll deductions and confirming with them the dates and the t when things are gonna start and the, the number of um, payrolls that are run in, a, in a, a year, those kinds of things, just confirming those details with your HR payroll office. This makes it nice and easy for them that you're getting all of the information at the onset of the campaign instead of them trying to go back later and, um, and fix it. We had a company here that got really excited about the campaign and did it, forgot to check with their payroll office and their payroll office just organizationally had said, we don't do payroll deductions for United Way. And so then we had to go back and try and re-communicate with all of those donors. Would you like to turn your pledge into something else? So had we known that from the onset, we could have just campaigned right from the start, but payroll deductions aren't possible as your company. Instead, there's these other ways that you can give, which can be highly successful as well. So it's just helping to get these things on the front end. It makes it a whole lot easier in the long run. So when you're um, confirming with the payroll deductions, on payroll deductions, just confirming, would you want to use our paper pledge forms or do, would you like to use our digital pledge forms? Those are both available that you can kind of take a look at those on our campaign toolkit page. Or does your company have their own pledge form or pledge system already built into their HR system. Texas A&M University uh, has a obviously very sophisticated benefit system. It's integrated right into their benefit system. So there's no, there's no need for paper pledge forms. People can still complete a paper pledge form if they like to, but it's integrated right in. So your company might have that as well. If, you, if your company uses any Salesforce uh, products, they probably have it integrated into their system already. Um, so just check with that and see if you're able to do it that way. Um, I already said, uh, confirm your dates of payroll deductions. Our recommendation is to start at January 1st, uh, but of course, make that work for your company. If your fiscal year is different and your HR department wants it to run on the fiscal year, let's go ahead and plan to set it up that way. Um, the next step is to confirm how will United Way of the Brazos Valley and what form will we be getting the, the, the payments from your company? Um, will it be on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis? We don't really have to know this information for a campaign to happen. It's just as helpful for us. It's just helpful for us to be looking for, hey, this check should be coming monthly or this check should be coming quarterly. We have a couple companies that are incredibly consistent with their quarterly payments. And so when it gets off a little bit, it causes a little bit of an interruption in our world of like, wait a second, where is that check? We should have gotten it by now. And then we could start checking into what's going on. First of all, we always want to find out, is it lost in the mail? And that's always a concern. Um, and if it's not that, then we try to figure out what else is going on. So just kind of helping to, to confirm for us, is it going to come monthly or quarterly or how is it going to come? 
Um, will it be mailed directly from your company's location here in Bryan College Station or will it be coming from a corporate office someplace else or even through another United Way? Those are kind of the conversations to be having in figuring out how will this money be tracking down to us. When it comes from a, another United Way, us United Ways are not always the greatest at communicating to the, each other what stuff is. So we'll just get a check from United Way of Kansas City and we would have to kind of track it down. So if we already know oh, that's where company XYZ's headquarters is, so that's why it's coming to us. It makes it a whole lot easier for all of us. Another thing is, do we need to provide any form of documentation to you to issue that payment? Generally, we shouldn't have to because it can be treated just the same as any of your other payroll deductions that an HR office has to pay, such as um, taxes or uh, benefits or anything like that, insurance. Uh, but some companies prefer us to send an invoice. We had a company that we hadn't collected on in a little while and we called them just to check in and see if everything was okay. They said, oh, well, we just never got an invoice from you. So we thought we're kind of wondering why you weren't invoicing us for that. And we said, we'll correct that, sorry about that. So just helping us make sure that we have done everything on our side that we need to. Um, and then also making sure this is something that is I, pretty obvious, but it's easy to also overlook, making sure that when you're done campaigning through your workplace and you've collected all of those pledge forms back, that you get a copy of them to your HR office and you don't just give us a copy. We had a company a couple of years ago who we all of a sudden stopped getting payments when we checked with their HR office. They said, we never got copies of our, the pledge forms. So we didn't know anything was even supposed to be paid. Um, so they never started the payroll deductions in the first place. So if you wanna make sure that those payroll deductions get started, make sure your HR payroll office knows that they're supposed to get started and gets those entered in. And of course, on any of this, if you want us to slow down and go work through with it, work, you, work with you through this, reach out to us. We're happy to sit down and have a conversation in person or over Zoom or whatever, ever, whatever method you would like. Um, and we're happy to talk through that. Um, so just talking a little bit about the pledge forms, we have a few different options on pledge forms. We have uh, paper pledge forms or digital pledge forms, and the digital pledge forms are, full, are customizable. We can make them look like your company. We can put your company logo on it um, and, and, uh, and make it a real customized experience for your um, employees. On the paper pledge forms, um, you, the pledge forms are triplicate. So there's three copies. Um, so one goes to the donor, one goes to your payroll office, and one comes back to United Way. On the digital pledge forms, obviously, if, if you're using ours, we're going to have that information. And then at the end, we'll send you a report of your employees and of your employees uh, elections for the payroll deductions. And then it'll come in an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can integrate it into whatever system, um, payroll system you're using. When uh, employees are giving, through payroll deduction, they still have multiple options, even within payroll deduction. They can do a one-time payroll deduction or as many pay periods as you have. Uh, you can let us know if, if you'd like us to opt one way or the other on that, if you don't wanna allow um, one-time gifts or something like that. On the pledge forms, uh, donors can also choose to give a one-time gift of cash, check, credit card, um, or they can, of course, do payroll deduction, like we said. Um, and I already talked about that last part. We'll hop on to the next one. This is a copy of our pledge form that, um, our paper pledge form. The, obviously the digital will look a little bit different than this, and that can be found on our campaign toolkit. Um, so as you can see, the important things is to make sure that the donor signs the pledge form, because that gives us authorization, that gives you the authorization to, to payroll deduct. Um, so you'll need that signature. If they're using a one-time gift, just making sure that information is in there. If they do provide a credit card information, once we run that and it's cleared, we will black that out. We will not retain it for future runnings unless they've told us they want us to do it four times over the course of the year. Um, at that point, what we would really encourage if they um, want to, our, our printed forms, I believe, they, these, this section that says Bill Me at Home has actually been changed to make a gift online. And so if they're going to do it multiple times, we're going to set it up in our online system to just automatically do it quarterly, if that's what they're wanting, monthly or quarterly. Um, so we'll still only actually manually have that credit card information once, and then we'll block that out. And then over here under payroll deductions, they've got the, get the option of however much they want to give per pay period, um, how many pay periods they have. 
think that's something that's important to communicate to your employees is how many payrolls they have. We will not know that information. Um, and we do have companies that have, within the same company, have multiple options. Some people are on a once a week, some people are on a twice a month situation. So being sure that your employees know what, how much that is. And then if you can confirm their math, make sure they complete their math or confirm their math for their annual gift, that's helpful. That's one of the things that normal will audit. Um, and if that's off, we'll have to come back and communicate and confirm what amount they intended. Did they mean $52 or did they mean $52 a pay period? Because they selected $52 and 24 pay periods. So we'll just need to confirm that information. If you're wanting to uh, opt into the fair share giver, if your company gives the fair share at day off, this is where they would do 1% of their annual salary, or if they'd like to do any percentage of their annual salary. Um, if they don't, sometimes employees don't know their specific annual salary because, you know, with raises, it's a percentage and it goes to some random number. Um, if you can you have your payroll office confirm that amount. Um, so we've got a final amount of how much it is that we're, that we're anticipating. So that's the pledge form and the digital is pretty much the same. The digital does the math for them. So they don't have to do the math themselves, um, which is nice. So the last, so the next two steps are the ones that we're, we're covering in um, other trainings. So this is kind of jumping to step number five of the last step of um, the campaign, which is reporting the results to United Way. Again, it would seem, think to seem pretty obvious, but it's amazing how many times when we're getting into April and we're trying to finalize our numbers for campaign, how many times we're calling and people are saying, oh yeah, it's just sitting on my desk. I got to get to it. It's one of those things that's like, Getting the project 95% of the way done in that last little bit can be the most tedious part, um, but it's so critical to us in order for us to finish things and have our documentation um, ironed out. There's a few reasons for that. Number one, we make planning decisions on this. Part of that is how much can we fund? How much are we able to give to nonprofit organizations? Uh, we only go, we make our, our budgets off of what confirmed pledges we have. I don't make an assumption of, well, we, they typically raise $10,000. I haven't heard anything, so I'm gonna guess it's 10,000. When it, I give a certain date, and if I don't have that number, it doesn't get counted. And so that means that that's less money that I can give to my to our partner agencies. So that's one part of it. it, it we can't use the work, the money for mission work if we don't know about the funds coming to us. But also for our own financial um, transparency and uh, financial accounting reasons, we need to have our ducks in a row. Uh, we go through an audit every year, like we ask our nonprofit partners to do every single year as well. And uh, our auditor looks at all of our books and pulls things. If we don't have documentation of pledges, they start asking questions. Where did you get that information from? So uh, to confirm that we're not just bloating our numbers and making things up that we have actual people that are making donations uh, behind each one of those pledges. So. Those are just a couple reasons for me to, to make, um, to just reinforce the importance of reporting those results back to United Way. So I'll show you a picture in a moment of the pledge report envelope. Um, so you're gonna, gonna wanna complete that pledge report envelope. If you're filling out the paper form, that it's an actual envelope, because you've got paper pledge forms, you're gonna put all of those pledge forms inside with any cash checks or credit card information inside, seal it up. If it's got an envelope, I always recommend, and I re train my staff on this here too, seal the envelope and initial across the flap. That just verifies that nobody has tampered with those donations from the time they leave your hands to the time they get processed in our donations office. Um, so it's just a com confirmation. Um, we try to limit the number of hands that touch those envelopes here in the office. We take them in at the front desk if Norma is here, she gets it directly because she's the one who's going to process it. If she's not, there's a safe that we put it in. So one person touches it and puts it in that safe. We try to be very, very good stewards of our donors' dollars and be very, very mindful of who touches them. Um, the fewer people that touch it, the less chance for something to go wrong. And so we try to be as careful as possible on that. Um, if you're completing the digital form of the payroll of the envelope, obviously you'll just complete it digitally, hit submit. Um, if they're doing digital pledge forms, we'll have all that information um, already. Uh, if there still is a need for us to pick up um, checks or credit card information or anything like that, we can coordinate that. Um, everything will be a little bit up in the air with just our office setting. We do have a Dropbox outside of our office, but I would never recommend you putting cash in there. 
um, checks at least are a little bit easier. We can trap, track them down and we do check it um, every, every business day to make sure nothing's been uh, turned in there. If our office is open, obviously you can walk it in um, or we are happy to pick it up. It might be easier this year just for us to pick things up. My staff is happy to get out. I'm happy to get out. It gives us another opportunity just to say hi to you guys as well. Um, and then uh, we don't re necessarily recommend putting it in the mail, but if that's the best option and there's no cash in there, you can mail it to us as well, especially if your office is a little bit of ways from our office as well. So this is what the campaign pledge um, envelope looks like. If, it's, if you're holding a paper form, it's printed on a big white envelope uh, that everything can sit right in there. If it's a digital, it's on a Google form. So it's just a real, pretty similar to what this is. Obviously the, the, um, the table on it won't be in a table form on the Google, Google form. We gotta have your company name. So as much information as you can provide on this is the better. Um, of course, you don't include everything, that's okay too, but be sure to put your company name, uh, your name and email address. That's really helpful if Norma has a discrepancy for her to know who to contact to confirm that discrepancy. Otherwise, we're going to call you and then we're going to start trying to track them down. Um, if there's, if a, a check doesn't clear or somebody didn't sign something or numbers don't match, we're going to come back to you to make sure that all of that does. Um, if this report is, is this report partial or final? So sometimes you might have a fundraiser and get $500 in cash and you don't want to hang on to it. Fill out one of these things, bring it to our office, but just select that it's partial, circle it, and then we'll know this is not a final number on, um, on campaign and we still have more stuff coming in. Um, if it's everything, circle final and we're good to go. And then down below, you'll just kind of follow what it is. Is it payroll deduction? How much is the total? How many donors are there? Same thing with checks, one-time gifts, credit cards, things like that. And you just go down. If you have specific questions on how to call, fill this out, just call Norma and she'll be happy to talk you through it and uh, figure it out. Sign the bottom of it, as well as initial across that flap on the back side, and that'll make it safe for us to accept and enter into our system. So once it comes into our office, I think I've kind of talked about this already, but uh, we're going to audit all of the totals to confirm the amounts. We're gonna communicate um, to the name on the envelope if there's any inaccurate information, and then we're gonna enter the pledge information into our donation system. We're going to process credit card payments and black out the numbers once they're processed. We try to do that pretty quickly after we receive it. Same thing with our deposit, our cash and checks. We try to deposit those pretty quickly. Uh, but just remember if your donors or if, if your employees ever ask, I've made this check, I wrote this check out and it hasn't been cashed yet. Um, if it's still sitting on your desk, that's the <laughs> number one reason. So we encourage you guys to get them over to us. And even if it's partial, that's fine. We'll pick up whatever you've got. Um, and you guys can keep on campaigning and keep on collecting. And then we'll issue receipt, receipts via email or letter, letter depending on what the gift is. Um, uh, we'll issue um, receipts differently. How we do that is our charitable contribution um, documentation. So a receipt will only be issued on certain types of gifts. So on payroll deduction, be sure that the donor retains a copy of the pledge form if you're using a paper version. If you're using the digital version, they should receive a, a digital copy of it. And then their W-2, that will document their charitable gift that they need to for their taxes. We don't provide receipts for the total payroll deduction received from their, the, each employee, and there's a reason for that. When you, when you guys make the payroll deduction, get it all entered in, um, and then send us money each month or quarter, when the check comes from us, it doesn't need to have a breakdown of all of the employees' information. We don't reconcile the employee collection, so we can't tell how much of that $100 check is Norma's gift versus Maggie's gift. So we just tally it for the entire company. So for that reason, we can't verify at the end of the year if an employee actually did fulfill their full pledge unless they pay us directly, which typically doesn't happen through payroll deduction. So for that reason, they need to retain their donor, the, their pledge form and their W-2, and that will verify their total that was uh, deducted. Employees can leave, employees can cancel their pledge, and if we don't know that information, if y'all don't pass it on to us, and that's okay if you don't, um, we don't ever know that, that that pledge wasn't fully fulfilled. On cash gifts and on, uh, on cash gifts, we will, we will email or print a receipt letter acknowledgement, thank you, um, 
when there is a pledge form provided or some form of documentation. If it's just a random $20, obviously we can't, thank, we can't acknowledge somebody for that. So if they fill out a pledge form, we will send an acknowledgement for that. Um, on checks, we will, even if we don't have a pledge form, while we would like a pledge form for all of those, um, we can use the check information to, to receive that gift as well. And they're either email or paper, depending on the gift amount. We have kind of a threshold in our system of what, when it will issue an email versus when it will issue a paper version. I've already touched on this a little bit, just um, payments to United, to United Way are either paid monthly or quarterly based on the previous payrolls, uh, previous periods payroll deduction. Um, you don't need to provide us individual documentation of deductions. So when you send us the check, you don't have to give us a breakdown of who's money it is. Um, if you do, if that's in your company's policies, it's fine. We'll take it. Please don't send a social security number or any form of personal identifying numbers. Um, we don't want to be responsible for that. Uh, so please uh, black, that, black out that information um, at least or hide that column or something like that. Um, it, when you are making your payments to us, it's really helpful if there's some form of documentation system on the check that tells us it's payment one of 12 or payment three of 12, whatever that is, uh, that helps us know when a campaign is complete on your collection period, because every company's collection period can be a little bit different. Uh, if everybody was July or January to December, it would be no problem, but everybody's a little bit different. So that will help us know um, which check, which number, and is, is this campaign complete? Can we close that out? Or if it's not, if we should still be anticipating um, something else. Also, sometimes corporations uh, or companies want to combine corporate match and employee payroll deduction into one check. That's fine. If you can delineate that out at all on it, that'd be great. If you can't, we'll figure it out. Um, but of course, I always try to train for best practice, um, and then we'll adapt to whatever the situation might be. If you prefer EFT, we're happy to do EFTs, um, but also just be sure to try and send some form of, of um, documentation of the contribution because otherwise it just shows up in our bank account. Our auditor will inevitably pull that one and ask why there's no backup documentation. They have a, auditors have a special keen awareness of what doesn't have the proper documentation in the file drawer, how they know that, I don't know, but that's the one that they will pull and um, want the further documentation, then we'll be coming back to you like, hey, can we get documentation of what this is? Um, so if you can just let us know when you are issuing an EFT, that's fine too. Uh, one last thing, I think this is the last thing I like to touch on just a little bit is opportunities for ongoing campaign efforts, um, what we call evergreen. So think of it this way that, um, would you be willing to incorporate United Way into any employee onboarding? Because employees come and go, right? And so if an employee starts in December and you've already had your campaign, would you present in their new hire paperwork the opportunity to complete a pledge and go ahead and start their payroll deduction in the next one in order to add them into that campaign? I think that's a great way to really incorporate United Way throughout your entire company and include everybody um, into it. And then also volunteer engagements. Um, we're happy to help. We're gonna invite you and your employees to some volunteer opportunities throughout the year. Uh, but if not, we'd love to also work with you to create some unique events organized for your company around your company's interests. And if that's something that you'd like to do, uh, we'd love to do that with you. I'm just gonna reference back to the employee toolkit. I've referenced it a lot, but I wanted you guys to see that one more time of where you can find resources for all of this. This is a lot of information to cover in an hour, and I know that it's a little bit of an information dump on you. This session is recorded, so you can go back and listen to it. Or I always say, as I, um, there's some checklist items. The uh, next steps is to contact Maggie and we'll walk you through this really slowly. I like to give kind of all of kind of what we're needing to do and then we can break it down step by step in order to get you started and get your campaign kicked off for the greatest success. Um, our next trainings uh, are in the next couple days on Thursday. I would encourage everyone to join for those if they can. The first one will be right at an hour. We're going to have, we're going to go pretty deep into some stuff in an hour. Uh, the second one will only be about 40, 30 to 45 minutes and just kind of a fun brainstorming session and giving you some ideas on some fun ways to um, do active fundraisers during um, social distancing in workplaces. So I hope this was helpful and informative in getting you guys started on, um, on starting a brand new campaign. 
this should not be the only time we talk to you. So please, I would say, go ahead and talk with us and let's start talking through how we can help you through these steps um, in order to uh, have your campaign set up for the most success possible. I will open it up for questions real quick if anybody has any questions. All right, well then we won't keep you guys any longer than we need to. We really appreciate you guys joining us. Thank you so much for what you're doing for United Way and joining the United Way campaign effort. Um, you are part of a big old effort across our community and it is so very, very, very appreciated. Um, so if there's anything we can do to help you, please let us know. My team is ready to jump in and help you guys however we can. So you guys take care and have a great rest of your day.